It's no surprise film media today is as well received as Chipotle. Everything from CGI looking as rubbery as Halloween masks to rules and worlds that make as little sense as Nintendo refusing to make their own equivalent of Steam already. But most of their issues could be forgiven if the writing wasn't awful. This is why the totally middling One Piece on Netflix may be remembered as the best show of the year, because the characters don't exude arrogance, refuse to accept responsibility, lash out at others, and so much more. A true rarity this kind of writing is today, as the reverse is now common. If it isn't a long-established character that's been totally destroyed, then it's a new character who's as pleasant as giving birth to a cactus. The question is, why? Why do so many of these characters keep popping up like pimples on a teenager? Well, frankly, because teenagers are writing them. Children, to be more specific, because writers today have as little life experience as an agoraphobic turtle with the moral fortitude of a politician. And we, the audience, demand more for less with little to no understanding or care for the industries changing around us, so long as we get more more of what we want without realizing the damage we've allowed. We have lived in a relatively peaceful era for an almost unprecedented amount of time, and in that time, Hollywood produced some of the best movies and television ever seen. Predator, Matrix, Lord of the Rings, Buffy, and Firefly are only some of the numerous fantastic examples, and boy, have we been spoiled. Legends of the industry kicked out bangers like Jurassic Park and Terminator. Rising stars like Christopher Nolan pumped out The Dark Knight while Guillermo del Toro managed to make, well, take your pick. And this isn't to ignore the tsunami that was the expansion of music or explosive growth of the video game industry. Most everything that could be improved was, and for many years, so why would we ever waste our time on those lame movies and shows of the past? CGI went from an effect that stood out like a tilted painting in a gallery to near photorealistic, so why bother with more and more selfish characters? Practical effects went from hunks of junk that barely worked to fully operational mechanical sharks that swim on their own, so who cares if heroes threw away their morals? Now, things like actors phone in their performances and CGI resembles rubber because visual effects studios are worked harder than landscapers in Death Valley. All the while, writing has worsened, and we lapped up all of these spectacular stories like someone spilt A1 steak sauce at a barbecue and they just kept coming, churning out movie after movie in an ever more difficult attempt to keep up with rising demand as general audiences slowly shifted from questioning and admiring the craft of film to clapping like trained seals anytime someone jingles some keys in front of them. Without good writing, it doesn't matter how fantastic the effects are or amazing the acting is, because that amounts to dressing up a condemned building. Many movies and shows were intended to teach people lessons of life, convey the struggles of history, and inspire future generations. Past filmmakers didn't have the same tools that we do today, so to compensate for this, writers needed to make a good story first and foremost, but the reliance on better and better tools has become a dependency. Now, if you so much as try to write encouraging characters that doesn't fit today's propaganda, you'll be shunted to the front of the line for the next bus ride to your local gulag, because there aren't enough lightsabers. This is why people are often warned or deterred from experiencing older stories for themselves, because modern propaganda tells us they are oppressive and evil. Take, for example, both victim and mouthpiece, Rachel Zegler. She genuinely thinks Snow White was stalked by a creepy man when that's obviously not the case. And those who follow her will blindly repeat her mistake because critical thought is in critical danger of extinction today. And I do believe that she is a victim and zealot because she had to learn this misinterpretation of Snow White from someone else who is themselves a victim of someone else's incorrect observation of this film or political agenda. It is because of this denial and reframing of history that dooms us to repeat the mistakes of the past. So if we we aren't allowed to learn from the past and don't have much in the way of present experience, then what are we left with? Stagnation. No inspiration for anything new or a foundation to improve what came before. For nearly 10 years, we've endured shameless and uninteresting sequels like Jurassic World and the Star Wars sequel trilogy, or propagandistic sludge meant to demoralize us like She-Hulk. God forbid it was both in the case of Terminator Dark <laughs> Fate or Wokavania Nocturne. The bomb on boy turned out to be useless as fuck. Whichever the case, the goal is clear, to keep us down and complacent to the benefit of those who have weaseled their way to the top of Hollywood. Not for the benefit of us all, rather so they can circle jerk themselves until they go blind. No good comes from degrading men or rewriting history like the Woman King. It's like these morons locked us and themselves in the same room and threw away the key, leaving only each other as company, because evil cannot create, hence why so many legacy franchises have been corrupted as they have. And since these people are in 
charge of this media dark age, the culture gets infected in turn. Ever wondered why people said good times create weak men? Well, look no further than the world we're in, because we're in the weak men make bad times part of that cycle. And needless to say, these writers have little in the way of work experience. No one is working on anything worth even an ad on AOL. And if they have written before, then it reveals the bubble they've lived in, like Jeff Loveness for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, who's primarily known for writing five years of Jimmy Kimmel. There's the propaganda I mentioned. How about the heads of the Rings of Power, John Payne and Patrick McKee? Both were uncredited writers for Star Trek Beyond and promised to be accurate to the books they claim to be such large fans of. And we saw how that all went. Or most of the writing staff behind Castlevania Nocturne having a few shorts under their belts. And studios don't hire writers who know the source material. This practice of not hiring writers who know the source material has become common practice. Marvel is infamous for this after their hiring practices were published, which I can only conclude is to justify not paying the writers more, as they'd want to see the worlds they care for protected. Can't have that pesky respect for the source material when there's an agenda to push. This is why The Witcher was a spitting in the face of that fandom, ultimately driving Henry Cavill away because it was subjugated by Lauren Hisrich. We're gonna make The Witcher, and it's sure to make money. Fantastic, so you're going to hire writers who are passionate about the source material and ensure a proper balance that fans will love and is easy for general audiences to appreciate? What the hell are you talking about? Young men don't want to see an inspirational hero sacrificing for those he loves. They want to see a race and gender swapped quadriplegic white supremacy attack survivor who's sponsored by Subway. This practice has gone on for many years to save money. Why hire a well-known writer for hundreds of thousands when you can get someone who can pen a script for a fraction that cost? And success isn't guaranteed as it most often ends poorly especially when the individual lacks discipline. Anyone else remember when Josh Trank made it big with Chronicle before being put in charge of Fant Forstick? Exactly. Let's touch back on The Witcher. Lauren Hisrich's only other major project was The West Wing before she landed the job of ruining The Witcher. She brought Snea Kors, Haley Hall, Claire Higgins, and others from prior projects like Umbrella Academy, The Defenders, and Power. Of course, this isn't a new thing. Writers have asked for help from other production staff for years, but the difference between then and now is night and day. Jaws is a great example of this, with Steven Spielberg, Carl Gottlieb, and Peter Benchley rewriting the script script almost daily, but not giving up. The results speak for themselves. They were passionate about making the best movie they possibly could under the extreme circumstances they endured by filming at sea with a broken machine. If it wasn't for other crew members like Roy Scheider contributing the black eyes like a doll's eyes line in Quint's speech, Jaws wouldn't have become the legendary film it is today. If modern writers were put under a fraction that level of stress, they'd be the first in line for Canada's made program. So without fans to ensure accuracy, experience to rely on, or talent for quality, we're left with a bunch of people trying to keep their friends employed. We all do it, sure, but there is a difference between asking a friend who's reliable and hardworking versus a bunch of stuck-up-their-own-ass sociopaths laundering money from major companies. If it isn't someone looking to make a little money, then it's an activist who lives chronically on the internet. And since their goals are basically to make money no matter what the cost, they'll just about bend the knee to whatever the demands are, just so they can avoid doing the unthinkable, like manual labor with the rest of us peasants. This is why Mike Flanagan stands out to me. The dude puts his heart and soul into almost every project he works on and reuses actors because they're all passionate about helping to make the best stories they possibly can. And it shows considering Flanagan dominates Netflix with some of the best series the company has ever produced with Haunting at Hill House, Bly Manor, and the amazing Midnight Mass. But we're not allowed to grow or speak out of line because of activism. No one risks a new idea idea because it isn't guaranteed to make money. Nobody has any passion or respect for source materials. It is because of these reasons and more that the art created today is often worth less than the toilet paper it's written on. But I do believe times are changing. Disney falters with every step and their shareholders are becoming more intolerant of Bob Iger's choices. Netflix continues to hemorrhage subscribers and the arguments of activists fall on more and more deaf ears as content creators are encouraged to push forward with their own creations. This is what we need. Once these major companies and studios realize that this is where the real and long-term money is, then we will really see the winds shift as writers grow, learn, and mature into what they were meant to be and not limited by the perception or beliefs of others. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.